I think what we offer is, is a three-part way of thinking about doing, doing work in, in the early 21st century at all. Uh, and the first thing is, what's the framework within which you are working? And for us, the broader framework is the framework of pluralism, which, again, in my one-sentence definition is people from different backgrounds living together in equal dignity and mutual loyalty. A larger way of thinking about that is we want to build societies where people's different identities are respected, where people from different identity backgrounds have po are in positive relationship with each other, and where all those people can come together to work for the common good. It's our three-part kind of framework of pluralism. Respect for identity, relationships between different communities, and a commitment to the common good. Right. So the first is you got to have a framework, and for us that's our larger framework, and we have a particular lens of religious diversity within that, but people can bring a gender diversity or a race diversity or a tribal diversity lens in. The second dimension is, is there is a knowledge base for your work. There is a knowledge base for the work of interfaith cooperation. It's a theological knowledge base. What do different religious traditions say about cooperation? It's a knowledge base of, of world history. What are some different times in history where people from different religious backgrounds have lived positively together? It's an activist history. Who are the great heroes of building interfaith cooperation? So there's an important knowledge base for this work. And finally, there's a skill set that you need to have. For us, it's can you organize people from different backgrounds to come together to, to do concrete projects, and then can you facilitate positive dialogues between those people? So that's a three-part way of thinking about any type of work, I think. What's the framework, what's the knowledge base, and what's the skill set? I think I'm most proud of the fact that so many young people around the world hear the story of the Interfaith Youth Corps and are inspired to start their own action. They want to be a part of this movement. They, they own this movement. They are the movement. And I'll, I'll tell you a, a, a brief story. When I first started the organization back in the late 1990s, when we were barely a project or two, barely a website, uh, a young man named Anas from Jordan found our website and said that he was a Muslim in Jordan and that he had met Jews for the first time and he'd become friends with them and he he didn't want uh, he didn't want the extremist message about Muslims and Jews not being able to live together, not being able to be friends, to be the dominant message. And he had found out about the Interfaith Youth Corps and he wanted to get involved. And I said over email, Anas, you know, why don't you start an Interfaith Action Group and here's some curriculum and go off and do it. And Anas brought together people in Jordan and people across the Middle East to run these Interfaith Action Projects. And he would send me pictures of the projects he ran and I would put those pictures up on our website. And Anas and I lost touch for several years, and I happened to go back to Jordan uh, in, in 2006, and um, Her Majesty Queen Rania of Jordan had asked the Interfaith Youth Corps to help uh, do some interfaith work in Jordan, and after I had a brief meeting with her, uh, I decided to look up the only other person I knew there, which was Anas. And I had no idea what Anas was up to. Anas could be an accountant for all I knew. Uh, and Anas and I met for coffee and I said, so what are you doing? It's been so long since we've been in touch. And he said, well, I'm leading Interfaith Youth Projects all across the region. And I am starting the Jordanian Youth Forum. And I'm writing books on best practices and doing intercultural projects. And I'm leading exchanges between the Middle East and, and Europe. And I said, Anas, how did you start? And he said, well, I emailed you and you, email, you emailed me back. And it, it really is that simple. That This message resonates with so many young people in so many places in the world. I think all they need is to know that there are other young people doing this. And there are. The Interfaith Youth Corps had a presence on six continents. Our Days of Interfaith Youth Service project took place in several countries around the world. And, and all it really takes is for you to say, I believe in the message of pluralism, and I want to be an ambassador of interfaith cooperation. I think the job of any organizer, and I'm a particularly an interfaith youth organizer, but whether you're a gender organizer or whether you're an organizer around uh, issues of poverty or the environment is you have to be able to tell your story in a way that people can participate in it. And what that means is it you can't
tell only a story of the inevitable crisis because it feels like you know the you know if if the, if the sky is going to cave in then nothing I do is going to make a difference. So you can't only tell that story, but you also can't be a mouse about the problem. So I think what we have are trying to do with the Interfaith Youth Corps is tell the story of the possibility of pluralism and how it requires people's active participation. And also to say, listen, you know, we live in an era where more people from more backgrounds are in more intense and frequent interaction than ever before. And that interaction is sometimes confusing. And people are asking the question, who am I as a Muslim or a Jew or as somebody who's not religious amidst all these people from all these other backgrounds. And there are a set of people in the world who have very clear, easy, destructive answers to that question. Those people are religious extremists. And if we don't have a different answer to that question, then we effectively forfeit that terrain to the religious extremists. And I, for one, refuse to do that. I love the world too much. I believe too much in my own traditions of America, of Islam, of India. I believe too much in the heroes that I admire. King and Gandhi and Jane Addams and the Dalai Lama and Dorothy Day and Mandela to, to, to say I'm going to simply hand the world over to, to people who want only their group to dominate and everyone else to suffocate.